An international energy expert has called on the Irish government to implement urgent measures that he says will allow the Irish economy to reap upwards of 5 billion euro in energy efficiency rewards. Serial tech entrepreneur Norman Crowley engaged in two months of intensive research based on the Irish government's energy costs for its own buildings and has identified savings that have the potential to yield very significant financial rewards. Uh, he's with me in the studio. He's the CEO of uh, Crowley Carbon. Uh, Norman Crowley, is it Crowley or Crowley? Crowley. Crowley you like, <laughs> as in Richard, yes. Norman, uh, good morning and, and morning. welcome. Now, first of all, before uh, we hear what you're proposing, let's get something of your provenance because um, they have good reasons to listen to someone like you because you've been there and you've done that. What exactly have you done? Well, I guess I'm, a, I'm what, what's called a serial entrepreneur, or as they jokingly say in Cork, a messer. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I've had um, three businesses um, since I, I left school, and I sold my last business for a half a billion dollars. So I guess um, that business employed two and a half thousand people across the globe. So, you know, when I... Well, you go back a bit here, because yep. I, I, this is quite inspirational. <laughs> half a billion uh, quid is not something to be sniffed at. No. What was your first business? What did you do? Um, when when I left school, I started off as a welder, um, so I have very deep qualifications, <laughs> and um, I worked at, at that. Um, and then in my early 20s, I set up a technology company called Trinity Commerce, and we were one of the first companies to discover the internet back when the internet was a very messy, mm -hmm. unreliable thing. And we built a business um, with about 150 people. Uh, in 1999, we were lucky enough to sell that business to Aircom in the height of the dot-com boom. Okay, yeah. that was business number one. What do business then. number one um, business number two um, what I did was at the ripe old age of 28 I retired Pat, um, which didn't really work out that well lasted about six weeks um, and then we set up a business which became Inspired Gaming Group um, which was a monster business in the digital gaming sector and um, that business we grew from zero revenues um, in 2001 to about a half a billion revenues by 2008. <laughs> <laughs> Extraordinary. Then you got rid of that one. Indeed. And just to give you an example of employment, we went from eight people to two and a half thousand people in six years with that business. So Fantastic. And then business um, number three. Business number three was a business called The Cloud, um, which was a Wi-Fi business. It became Europe's largest Wi-Fi operator. And we sold that to Sky in 2011 for about 80 million. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> so any, yeah. anyway, you're not short of a, a few bob, but you still haven't retired. No, um, I mean, why would you retire? You know, it's about um, it's about going on to the next thing. And so when when we sold the last business in 2008, we wanted to, you know, when you when you set up a new company, you're signing up for eight to ten years of work, basically, mm -hmm. you know, because you've you've got to build it, and then maybe you'll sell it at some point. But you're signing up for that. And when I was setting up this business, um, you know, I was 38, so you're signing up for another eight to ten years. So we wanted to do something that would make money, but also that would help the world in some way. You know? So what does Crowley Carbon do? <clears throat> what Crowley Carbon does is it's an energy efficiency business. So we go into large corporations, large buildings, and we reduce their energy consumption by cutting waste. Yep. And okay, that's either heat going out or light uh, being... Yep provided expensively rather indeed, than cheaply. Indeed, or cooling. So to give you an example, we work on the largest shopping mall in the world, Dubai Mall, and its cooling bill every year. Um, if you think your heating bill is big, uh, the cooling bill on Dubai Mall is 33 million euros a year. <laughs> <laughs> and so we work with very glamorous names like that, you know, Jaguar, Land Rover, McLaren, motor cars, you know, some very big names. Yeah. How do you get in the door, though? I mean, you know, your, your tradition and history was in digital digital stuff yeah. and then suddenly you're into yeah, heavy, heavy metal as we call it yeah, yeah but yeah. also I would say is one of the most exciting businesses to be in at the moment yes, anyway yeah. I mean I had you know I have all these ideas I wanted to set up an LED light shop yeah. about five years ago because yeah. that's yeah. where I saw of course yeah. I didn't I stayed broadcasting <laughs> you'd have done okay you'd have. <laughs> I'd have done okay but you know this is where the, the, the cutting edge is going to be Indeed. with global warming climate change mm -hmm. and all the rest of it mm -hmm. saving energy and not burning carbon Indeed. is a big deal it's a 
big deal. Like to give you an idea, wind, wave, and solar. That we all think about wind turbines and that. The latest statistics say that if that works really well, if wind, wave, and solar work really well, then they'll represent between fifteen and twenty percent of the world's power. But actually, every day we waste forty percent of all the power that's used. This is the leaks in the water system. The same sort of <laughs> exactly thing. Exactly the same sort of thing. And like, you know, if we talk about government just a little bit, like this is a hospital heating itself with steam, the same way it did in the eighteen eighties, and that's what's happening here today and so the waste everywhere is phenomenal now uh, what are you proposing i mean uh, let's put the global number on it first if the state in its portfolio of properties be the the hsc or the civil service Mm. or any of the the Mm. multiple uh, quangos we hear about Mm. if they put their energy house in order Mm -hmm. how much money could they save every year just that number alone is 200 million a year minimum Right, just that Minimum. number. Yeah. How much investment to to do that? Because I often think of healthcare, for example. Mm. You can put in a health uh, prevention strategy, mm. cancer prevention, for example, on diet or diabetes prevention. Mm. But it might take thirty years mm. before you see yeah. that not yeah. many people are getting type two diabetes now, yeah. and governments don't think in thirty-year no. cycles. Well, just to give you an idea, if you replaced an inefficient steam boiler in a hospital with a brand new efficient boiler, you would get your savings five minutes after it was commissioned. But the payback on your money would be between two and three years. And two and three years. Yeah. But I have to find the money to put the boiler in. Well, that's a very good point. But Europe is throwing money at any country that wants to do inter- energy efficiency at the moment. They have multiple funds out there that they are dying for countries to take up and most of those funds haven't been taken up by governments at all. They're just sitting in Europe. There's a joint fund that Deutsche Bank have with the European Commission that's completely undrawn. There's hardly none of it taken. So, so for example, if my energy bill in a hospital is two grand a week, Mm -hmm. just suppose, Mm -hmm. and uh, I need to invest a hundred grand in a new boiler. Yeah. Okay, they will actually give me the money and I will use my savings over the two years to pay them back. Not only will you use the savings to pay them back and it doesn't cost you anything, but the amount of money you have to pay them back is way less than the savings you're making. So even in the two years of paying the money back, you're still saving money. It's that good an opportunity. And why are we not doing it? It's just, I think the government has a belief that it's just something on the long finger or something that isn't important. But the problem is, the 200 million in savings is only the thin end of it. If the government encouraged corporations to do energy efficiency as well, then the employment here, this is their numbers, not my numbers, would be another 15,000 jobs. Okay, so that's another 200 million a year. Because we could busy ourselves over the next five years or whatever, bringing all the old stock, retrofitting, yes. bringing it all up to, yeah. to speed. And the, and the people that would do that work are the construction workers that are hardest hit by the current recession. They're the people that, like I employ nearly 100 people at this stage between Ireland and the UK and it's electricians and plumbers and the exact same people that do this. You know, yeah. This is not um, sort of uh, high, high tech. It's kind of low tech most of it. A lot it? of it is just practical thinking about things. There is some high tech involved but a lot of it is just practical thinking. Clearly control systems and so on which give you energy when you need it. No point in heating a building uh, when, when there's no nobody one's there. there. Yeah. Um, recently passed, regularly passed on Leary Library, the new building. It may have low energy lighting in it for all I know, but it's on day and night. And I'm just wondering, does no one think, who's paying the bill Absolutely. for that thing glowing at midnight Absolutely. when there's nobody in it? Yeah. And it, like the waste, the more you see of the waste, the more frustrating it becomes. And just in case the people out there think that it's very easy for Norman Crowley to say this because he's going to get the benefit of it. We don't work on government projects at all. So we are encouraging government to do this, but we aren't the ones who will reap the benefit. We're lucky enough to work with the largest corporations in the world. We're sold out the whole time, thank God. This is just about you know, if you think about the cutbacks that are being made at the moment and the unfortunate people that have to live with these cutbacks all over the place, the total number we got, and this is a government number, not our number, is 660 million a year that could be um, given to the exchequer every year between new employment, between savings on energy and also between fines. So by 2020, if we don't get our house in order, we're going to have to pay upwards of 600 million in fines. And this isn't our number again. This is a a number that Minister Rabbit disclosed about a year ago. So, I mean, the pain that we're going to get, never mind the damage to environment, the pain that we're going to get for not doing this is significant. 
OK, Norman, let's talk practicalities. Now, the householder, I mean, I put LEDs in my house mm-hmm. and I know it'll be a while before I get a payback, mm-hmm. solar heating on the roof. I've, done, I've tried to do a few things. But in the larger environment, say an office block mm-hmm. occupied by a civil service department, mm-hmm. what are the steps they could just give us one, two, three, four that yeah. they could do almost immediately? Yeah. Well, like heating and cooling is where most of the money is spent and it's also where most of the money is wasted. So it's putting in proper control systems, upgrading boilers, even things like servicing chilling systems that haven't been serviced in years is just the simple things that need to be done. And then if you take a hospital as an example, there's significant issues in hospitals where wards are overheating because they're using ancient technology to do it. Um, we've seen the state of some of the heating and cooling that's going on in these places and what it, just similar to what many many householders have done in the last five years just simply upgrading to a more efficient boiler upgrading to a better control system it's that simple what about insulation and glazing insulation and glazing has a slightly longer payback but again many hospitals and prisons need to do that right now and you get a double benefit from that you get an energy saving but also the place looks better and and that's something that isn't even taken into account into 200 million savings. But of course the trickle down effect that you talk about where Mm. more people are at work Mm. um, who all pay income tax including the USC the iniquitous USC and their purchasing power in the retail sector Mm. I mean it's win 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 Absolutely and there's a a thing that's happening as well the wider win even than that is Ireland gets a reputation in this huge global marketplace for having massive expertise in energy efficiency. We're at the bottom of the list in performance at the moment in Europe and we could go from there to the top very, very quickly. What about automotive? Is there any scope there? I think automotive at the moment is looking after itself. You know, I I looked there recently. My last car went from doing 20 miles to the gallon to doing 50. I'm lucky enough to be changing it in next year and the statistics on the new car are nearly 100 miles to the gallon. So a lot of the automotive thing is kind of happening itself at the moment. Okay, now you have uh, made the suggestions What needs to happen for implementation? I mean, do we need... uh, We have an energy minister, Mm. um, but do we need uh, some sort of... Maybe is it the minister with charge of the OPW who needs to pull up his socks? I think, look, I think there's multiple ministers involved and I think they all need to pull up their socks. I think the, the first step is to realise that this opportunity exists and that, that it can be done, that it doesn't have to cost anything to the exchequer at the moment to do it. And then on top of that, the, the government has the Sustainable Energy Authority of Ireland sitting there, you know, um, and they these guys are very, very good, right? They're a very good authority. They really know their stuff. My view is what they should do is give that authority the power to super Supervise this happening because somebody outside of the departments themselves need to have the responsibility to get this done. So is the expertise here because uh, clearly you, you say you're not interested in government uh, contracts but the idea of having people come in survey a hospital, a prison uh, an office block or whatever and just get to it and, and what would the likely turnaround time be? How quickly could you survey, um, assess invest, implement? Within four to five months Four to five months. Yeah, your savings could so be the achieved. the savings start yeah. then. Yeah, absolutely. And Europe knows that this is an important issue. The government has written countless papers. Like one of the things we found out in looking at the numbers here was that if you take the health service, for example, their energy bill is between 80 and 100 million euros a year. Yeah, And they came, the government announced in 2009 that they were going to Im- impact and get these savings, right? We, When we were looking at this, it came to light that the HSE won't even have a plan to implement savings until 2016 and yet the plan came out in 2009 now is that not ridiculous that is absolutely ridiculous you're an inspirational man Norman Crowley of Crowley Carbon thank you very much for joining us The Pat Kenny Show with Energia energising thousands of new customers every month